I was living alone on the ninth floor of the 13th story apartment block. It was a hot and sultry Saturday night. I was drinking beers. I went to the fridge in search of a snack, but there was nothing good to eat. I was hungry, so I decided to go to the nearby convenience store for a snack. I couldn't be bothered to change my clothes, so I went there in my pajamas. I didn't think many people would be on the streets anyway. I left my room and called the elevator. I noticed that it stopped on the 10th floor. It didn't come right away. I guess somebody had got in up there. I stood alone in the hallway, listening to the summer insects chirping in the distance. My guess was right. Someone was in the elevator. Probably a guy, I thought, but I couldn't tell straight away if they were wearing dark clothes. It was clear that this person, at the very least, could be described as suspicious. I was nervous. I thought, not getting in the elevator would look weird, so I shuffled in. Good evening, I said quietly, and we began our descent. It was awkward. He ignored me. He was leaning against the elevator wall with his arms folded. I stood close to the doors. I wanted some distance between us. I didn't want to get involved with him, so I faced the other direction instead of standing eye to eye with him. The way he was breathing was creepy. It was anger filled. It gave the illusion that he was stood right behind me. I felt his sharp cold stare on my back as the elevator descended. The elevator was filled with dreadful silence. The atmosphere was overwhelming. When we arrived at the ground floor, he tried to sprint out of the elevator. He clattered into me. He bumped my shoulder as he tried to get past me. I said, sorry. Again. He just ignored me. He exited the apartment block and disappeared into the darkness. He was so rude. I was irritated by the incident as I hurried towards the convenience store. I walked along the dark street for about five minutes. When I saw the light of the store up ahead, I felt relieved. I chose a snack and went to pay at the register. The cashier greeted me and his face dropped. He looked shocked. I asked him jokingly, what's the matter? He stared at the floor and replied, uh, no nothing's the matter, sir, so sorry. I was confused and a bit hazy. I entered my apartment and stopped dead in my tracks. I saw something unbelievable. My reflection in the mirror. More specifically, my shoulder. There was blood on my shoulder. I quickly took off my pajama shirt to check if my shoulder was bleeding or cut, but it wasn't. Then I remembered the man in the elevator. He bumped into me. Could it have been his blood? I didn't see any blood on the guy in the elevator's clothes, but his clothes were black, so I guess it would have hidden it. I didn't notice. I felt quite sick. I threw my snacks in the fridge and just went to bed. A few nights later, I was relaxing in the living room when the doorbell rang. I put my eye to the peephole to see who was there. He looked like a police officer. I had just gotten out of the bath and I was in my underwear. I tried to speak to the officer without opening the door. How can I help, officer? I asked. Good evening, sir. Sorry to bother you. I'm investigating a murder which took place two days ago. Have you seen anyone acting suspicious? As he asked this, I shuddered. I knew instantly. The man I met in the lift must have been the killer. But I was very busy. I didn't have time to go down to the police station and be questioned all night, so I selfishly said, I didn't see anything that day. I wasn't home. The officer smiled politely, bowed, and said, Thanks for your cooperation. Then he rang the bell for the neighbor's apartment. I felt guilty. I almost opened the door and admitted I did see something. It was frightening to know that someone in my building had been murdered. But the most frightening part came later. A day later, I turned on the television after work. The news was on. 
there was a story about a murder in my apartment block. Seeing it on TV was sobering. I felt the disgusting fear of knowing this happened where I lived in the pit of my stomach. But, on the other hand, it seemed so surreal. Like it was unrealistic. The announcer read the news. It seemed that the murderer had been caught. A close-up photo of the murderer's face appeared on the screen. My heart stopped for a moment in my chest. I gasped. I couldn't believe it. Because that was the face of the police officer who rang my doorbell last night. If I hadn't been so selfish, maybe I wouldn't be alive today. I heard this story from a co-worker. He was living in a block of apartments which was nine floors high. Above the ninth floor, there was the roof floor. Residents had access to it. One night, heavy rain was falling. He came home from work around midnight after doing some overtime. He saw that the elevator was stopped on the roof floor. He wondered who would go up there on such a rainy night. He called the elevator. It came down through the floors until it reached him at the ground floor. No one was using the elevator. He watched the doors slowly open. The floor of the elevator was wet due to the rain. He got inside and pressed the ninth floor button, his floor. The doors closed. Inside the elevator, he could smell something foul and rotten. It was a disgusting odor. He said he didn't want to breathe in that horrible smell to let it go inside his body. So instinctively, he put his hand over his mouth and nose. The elevator started slowly moving up through the floors. He casually glanced at the door and froze in fear. He saw his own reflection in the glass panel. He was covering his mouth and nose, but there was someone stood behind him. He was alone in there. Nobody else was using it. Something unworldly was in that elevator with him. Someone was there, a woman with long black hair. She was wearing dark clothes. She was standing very close to him, clinging very tightly just behind him. One eye was peering at him through her long hair. The shape of the woman's head was wrong. It was as if it was crushed. Part of her head looked like it was missing. His heart ceased to beat in his chest for a moment. Whatever you do, don't look behind you, he thought. He wanted to get the hell out of that elevator, but he couldn't move. His apartment was on the ninth floor. Usually, the elevator ride takes no longer than a minute or two, but that night, it felt endless. He couldn't look away from the glass panel. His mouth was filled with saliva. He didn't dare swallow, couldn't move a muscle. The woman behind him, with her crushed head, smiled, as if she was delighted by his fear. Hurry up and get me to the ninth floor, he desperately prayed in his heart. The elevator went past the third floor, then the fourth. Get me out, get me out now, he begged. The elevator passed the fifth floor. As soon as the doors open on the ninth floor, Run as fast as you can, get in your apartment, and lock the door, he thought. He was so terrified he couldn't take it much longer, but he told himself to endure it until the ninth floor. Floor six, floor seven, floor eight, the ninth floor, finally I'm free, he thought. But the elevator didn't stop at the ninth floor. Why didn't it stop? It continued to the roof. When he arrived at the roof floor, the door opened slowly. It was pitch black and the rainfall was heavy. He was completely alone. If there's no one here, who called the elevator? He wondered. Terrible waves of panic overwhelmed him. 
The woman was no longer stood behind him. Something told him to leave the rooftop immediately. Instinctively, he hit the button for the ninth floor and the doors closed. As the elevator began its descent, he saw the woman stood on the edge of the rooftop beyond the safety fence. Instantly, he understood. Ah, she jumped. She jumped from here. If that woman left on the roof, the elevator arrived at his floor. As soon as the doors opened, he ran into his apartment and locked it. Behind him, he knew that the elevator was on its way back up to the roof once more, but he didn't dare look over his shoulder to check. A few days later, he began searching for new places to live. During this time, he heard a rumor that a woman from his building jumped to her death recently on a rainy night. After work, I went shopping at my local mall. I think it was about 8 p.m. The stores were really small. There wasn't much choice in this mall, but it was convenient for everyday items, so I often shopped there. It was six stories high. The fifth and sixth floors were car parks. The mall itself was from the first floor to the fourth floor. There was also a basement floor. When this happened, the basement floor was being renovated. Therefore, it was off limits to the general public. The mall closes at 9 p.m. The staff were beginning to close their individual shops. I finished shopping on the fourth floor. I didn't want to keep the staff waiting, so I hurried towards the exit. I headed towards the elevator since the escalators had already stopped. I got in the elevator and pushed the button for the first floor. I had used the elevator before. It's very stuffy in there and there isn't a window either. It's quite claustrophobic. It was poorly lit, slow. The noise of the elevator was loud, and behind me there was a huge mirror. It's quite uncomfortable. When the elevator began its descent, I looked at the button panel. The first floor button wasn't lit up, but the basement floor button was. I must have pressed the wrong button, I thought. But even when I pressed the first floor button, it didn't light up. It felt like the elevator was speeding up. The mechanical sounds grew louder. Finally, it came to a stop in the basement floor. I could see the renovation work in place. A sign read, no public access. The doors slowly opened. All the lights were off as it was under construction. I could hardly see a thing. The only source of light was the green lights above the emergency exits. No one was down there. No construction workers or mall staff. It was just a wide, spacious, open floor. It was creepy. I wanted to get out of there. So I quickly pressed the button for the first floor. As the doors slowly closed, something came into view. I couldn't make out what it was at first. My eyes hadn't adjusted to the darkness. But it seemed like someone was running towards the elevator to make it in time before the doors closed. So, I hit the door open button. But then, my eyes adjusted to the darkness and I could see a bit clearer. I could see a person's silhouette. He must have been over six foot six. He was very thin, tall, and his head was small. I realized why his figure looked so strange. He was running with both of his hands behind his back. His body was twisting and turning with each step. It looked as if he would fall down at any moment, and he was heading right towards me. I was terrified. I quickly hit the door close button. He was getting closer and closer, his body twisting and writhing. I repeatedly hit the door close button. Finally, the door began to slowly close. The exit guide light above the elevator illuminated him a bit. He had no hair on his head. I couldn't see very well because I was panicking so much at the time, but I remember that he was barefoot as well. 
even after the door is closed. I continued to press the button repeatedly like an idiot. The elevator didn't move. I hadn't pressed the first floor button. I was confused and frightened. When I finally pressed the first floor button, I heard a huge bang <laughs> strike the outside of the elevator doors. The force was so strong, it shook the whole elevator. The elevator arrived at the first floor. I called my boyfriend immediately and asked him to pick me up.